All right, our first speaker of the afternoon is Jia Jia, speaking on automorphic periods and relative trace formula. Okay, so thanks for the invitation. And I'll be talking about automorphic periods and the relative trace formulas. So let me start with the setup. Um, we start with a reductive group over a global field and some subgroup H. And you already put the requirements that are spherical. And we consider the automorphic quotient is the quotient of the adetic point by the rational point. And because we have a subgroup, you have an inclusion of the quotient. And giving some cuspid automorphic implementations on the group, what you can do is you can integral those automorphic forms over the small group, and this is the automorphic period. And the reason for interested in this object is because I mean, most of the time they are related to L values of, of something defined by the reputation pi. For example, in the case where the inclusion is some quadratic extension you cross for GL2, this is the formula of what's for J. And in case of GLN embeds into GLN times GLN plus one, this is a ranking Selberg integration. Okay. And this is automorphic period. And also I want to mention in passing, um, the analog of those periods in the arithmetic version. So, so the first thing is like a formula similar to the course that here, where the F is the number field and, and replacing the automorphic quotient to consider the corresponding Shimura varieties whenever they can be defined. And in case this variety is sits into the nice dimension, is you can consider the intersection pairings of those cycles defined by the sub varieties, and they are often related to the derivative of L functions. And similarly, in the work of Wei Zhang and Zhu Wei Yun, where you replace, you consider the picture in the case of a functional field, and you replace the Shimura varieties by the so called Shudukash. And once again, because you have the subgroups, it naturally defines the inclusion of Shudukas. And in certain cases where, in certain, certain cases where one can show those cycles are nice and you can try to compute its intersection pairings. And in the case of functional fields in the extra flavor is in the Shuduka, you can define it over different copies of legs. This is R, which can be anything greater than zero though. And in case R is zero, you back to the daily quotient. And in this case, those pairings are expected to be related to the R's derivative of the L functions. Okay, and it's the analogs of those periods and the reason I mention them is also because sometimes the strategy of proving those things can, can be similar in the different pictures. So talking about strategies, I want to mention as the relative trace formula, the relative trace formula introduced by Jacquet is to study those periods. The setup is you get some group G and involve subgroups H1 and H2 and with a test function F is a complex body function on the identity point of G. And when consider the curl function defined by F, this is the summation over the rational points and this is the kernel functions that defines the action of F on the automorphic spectrum of G. And when consider the integrations of the kernel functions over the identity quotient of the subgroups, and as, as usual in the trace formula, these integrations can be unfolded in different ways. And first way is the geometric ways where it just unfolds into a summation of orbits by the groups acting on your large group G and the orbits is the orbits of the rational points. And for each of the orbits, you have the integrations over the corresponding orbits. And this is the orbital integral. And on the other side, if you treat these functions as uh, spectral expansions, then the integrations give you the periods that we're talking about in the last slide. So the formulas give you a ways to 
So the summations over all the automobile limitations and the phi is uh, also more basis of the representation. The formulas give you ways to include all those periods all together with the help of a test function f and translate into the something geometric. Okay, are there any question? What does vehicle mean? Sorry, what's that? Could you recall the definition of spherical? Uh, oh. Uh, so I want to avoid saying too much, but the point is you can't, you can't do like any group edge, so you don't put some restriction and the technical definition would be um, the action of the barrier of G on G cosine by H has an open, open orbit. You want to put some restrictions so that the periods would actually have some reasonable meaning. Okay. Mm. So, so your strategy of using those relative trace formulas um, is usually done by some kind of comparisons where you have several trace, relative trace formulas and do the comparison. The strategy is usually the following. So in one of the trace formulas, which involves G and H1 and H2, where you have the formulas I mentioned in the previous slide, then um, this period includes the ones you want to study. And you want to compare it with another relative trace formulas called G prime and H1 prime and H2 prime. And this periods are usually can be related to L function in a more direct way, like they probably like giving better rank variable integrals, for example. And the idea is if you if you want to show the periods you want to start in, in the first triple would, would be related to some L functions. You want to compare those trace formulas between these two triples. And this involves a comparison of on the one side the, the cultural orbits, you see the terms in the two red trace formulas, is the terms of summation on the geometric side, you want to have the same number of terms and there are ways to identify them. And then you want a ways to identify functions on the two different groups on G and on G prime, so they would have the same orbital integrals. So this will give you a equality of the orbital integrals and which will give you an equality on the spectral side involving the periods. And and until now, the question is global, but once you come to the margins, you can make this question to purely local questions. You reduce this question to the existence of this margins for every local places, and then you glue them together. Also, this is, in order to glue them together, you have to prove something like a fundamental dilemma. Okay, that's the strategy. And I'll go in, into one specific example because that's is what I'm talking about for a moment. And this is the Zachary Rice approach to the GGP periods in the neutral case. And what you want to do is you have the group UN, which stays as, as a subgroup, diagonal subgroup of UN times UN plus one. And there's a Zachary Rice approach, give you a comparison of relative trace formulas, and you do all those reduction give you to the give you to the following local picture. The local picture is the following. So you take some knot in the field F and a quadratic extension. And on the one side you have the actions of the GON X by conjugate at the GON plus one with one extra dimension. So you put it on the first N by N matrix and conjugate on the one more dimension. And it has a twisted form where you take the Hermitian spacers and the unitary groups acting on the D-algebras with one more dimension. And it's proved by serious peoples, these two pictures can be compared. And this leads to the proofs of the gangrene result in the unitary case to relate those periods to L functions. And 
the comparisons are done in several steps. First one is the existence of transfers by Wei Zhang, and the, the transfer is satisfied by a fundamental lemma. And I want to mention, if you are familiar with the fundamental lemma, so the first proofs of this fundamental lemma in this case by Zhu Yun and Zhu Jordan, they are using the techniques similar to the endoscopic case where you first prove this in character T using geometry and then formally deduce the case for character zero. And later it was shown this technique can be avoided in this case and one can prove the fundamental lemma in this particular case um, purely using a harmonic analysis method. And also the work we call Wei Zhang on the transfer is also purely a uh, harmonic analysis in this uh, character zero. Okay, um, I'll now mention some of my works in this. Um, so we mentioned this existence of transfers between these two actions and there's a consequence of this. In, in the definition of this transfer, when you say like functions are marching the same thing as saying they have the same orbital integrals on orbits that are called regular semi-simple, which by definition means orbits are closed and it has a minimal dimensional stabilizer. The reason is because for the other orbits, like more degenerate orbits, the integral, the orbital integral for the one hand is, is sometimes not well defined. And for the other hand, there's no clear ways of matching orbits on both sides. So definition only involves the regular semi-simple orbits. And one could write down many other orbits which are not necessarily regular semi-simple. And I'm writing down a few examples of this as will show up later. The first one is in the GON case where you put, you put A on the first n by n component and some vector on the second component but being zero though, for the other components, the, the orbits is not closed. And Another one I want to mention is in the usual part where you put A on the first part and B in zero, zero, zero elsewhere, this orbit has a non-trivial stabilizer. So in, in general, for this action, the orbit has trivial stabilizer. So these are some orbits that doesn't face into the definition of the theory. And what I'm going to show is, what I'm able to show is for this specific orbit, the transfer still give you some relations on, their, on this orbit. So if you have a transfer function in the previous sense, then th there is a precise relations between their orbital integrals on certain orbits that is called regular semi-simple. This includes orbits I read just now, this specific orbit. You can still make sense of their orbital integrals and their, for any matching function, they would produce you with some consequence. And, and for example, if you take the function in the fundamental lemma and you take this orbit as examples of one we see just now, then the orbital integrals can be, it turns out one can show by the theory that the orbital integrals goes equals to a summation of the ones on each side, the summation over B and the B ranging over all the conjugate classes that is stable conjugate to the matrix A. And the interesting part of this formula is the right hand side is not something particularly strange. It's actually something that shows up classically to the stable orbital integrals on the neutral group. Because it's summing over the stable conjugate classes. And, and furthermore, you can do this more better. You can include some characters because the kappa orbital integrals with some other orbits on the geo side. Is there a question? So this is the formula and I want to see why this can be useful. And the first is this formula can be used to give a reproof of the endoscopic fundamental lemma. This is the work of uh, Lamar and Engel in the case of unitary groups. The original proofs use the techniques in positive characteristic, but the previous formulas has shown you can translate those orbital integrals to something on GON. 
and sometimes this can be easier to treat. And, and indeed, we're able to show in the case of user groups, this formulas can give you a little proof of the endoscopy of the monoma. And the good thing about the proof is now it's purely a harmonic analysis argument in the coverage of zero. And another thing I want to mention is the formulas on the dimension that can be treated as a degenerate transfer from the jacket radius. So all the integrals, even though they happen in the jacket radius case, they both happens on some boundaries of this. And so it turns out that this integral is actually action of GON on the diagebra times the vector component. And then usually side you go back to the the joint actions of the diaspora. And we said before, if you have a global question, then you reduce it to a local question. But now you get a bit low local question, you can try to globalize that to get it to some global pictures. And for this specific transfer, it leads to several global questions that are interesting. The first one is, is the conjecture by Jack K relating the comparison of relative transformers and this, this on the one side, this is action of the, um, on the one side is action where you have the user groups and you have GON and user groups and this is the orbit. On the other side, this is the, also the GON but over a uh, base field F and includes the Eisenstein theory. The Eisenstein theory involves the function of the vector component and is roughly the same thing as the Fn. And turns out this action is basically the same thing as this action. And this action of GON on this part is the same thing as this action. So our local pictures give the local ingredients needed to compare these two vector transformers. And and also there's another way to globalize this picture. This is recent work of Spencer Lashley, where you consider the periods related to the inclusions of U n times U n to U two n, and this is the unitary Friedberg JK period, and to relate this to the period of the base change, and the corresponding relative transformer comparison also leads to the same local pictures involving a comparison of these two. Okay, um, that's everything and thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? Yes, at the beginning you were telling that some uh, integral with those uh, group A were related to some L function for pi, but which L function, which representation of the dual group will come up? Oh, so, um, so you mean the first slide, right? Um, so these are going to be related to the geometries of the sub of the chi edging involves, and from the edge and G, you would produce some. Mm, some therapies and that would give you the L function. It's going to be some automatic L function associated with G. Uh, to what extent do you recover Nagao's work? I mean, uh, the fundamental limit. So you have this uh, unitary case with elliptic. Uh, yes, you cover everything on the unitary case. You recover everything in the unitary case. And, yes. and what about other groups? Uh, so there's an issue because for other groups, you don't really have uh, ways to move it to some other uh, place. So the point of why the user group is nice because when you move it to the GLN, uh, sorry, uh, when you move it to GLN, uh, this, mm, sure. um, this endoscopic groups, they become a levy. Yeah. And become GLA times GL beams into the GLA plus B and that's that's why it becomes possible to comparison. And so 
I would probably say maybe in the case where you can put into a level, maybe that's going to be a strategy, but not in general. I see. Um, uh, and it, are these cases of the fundamental lemma classically, uh, I guess it's Lamont Nogal, the first case, yeah. are those identities easier to prove in that case as well when they go to their geometric view? No, this idea is basically the same thing. The, we just generalize that to arbitrary groups. Well, I mean, they had to use Hitchin vibrations and things like that, which you're avoiding yes. by using harmonic analysis. I'm trying to understand uh, the generality of their method and your method. Or, and you, you're explaining you can do unitary groups as they're special. You, um, you weren't special for them. Is that, that, is that the point? I think, I, I, I don't quite believe this method can be done for other groups, uh, at least, you know, in the most generality. And for their method, they're basically, I mean, the method are similar. You just generalize to, to all the groups. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions for the speaker? All right, let's thank you, Ray, again.